Hello, everyone. Me and my group members are going to be presenting over fish eyes. I am Adesalia Gunya. And I'm Bella Lynn. And I'm Adesalia Murillo. Um, so first, we're going to start off with how much we know already about fish. So some questions to answer are, can fish see color? Do fish have tears? And who can see better, fish or humans? And these questions will be answered later on in our PowerPoint. So to answer the first question, can fish see color? The answer is yes. Fishes live in a different light environment than us and water absorbs light. So it will be harder for them to see color underwater. So just like the picture showing, most fish in shallow water can see more color compared to the deep water fishes. Because the deeper you go, the less color you can see. Fishes that are living near water surface can see almost all colors, while fishes live below 80 meters can only see up to two colors. And to make it more interesting, some sharks and rays have no color vision. And now let's look at their eye structure. So fish eyes, they have similar eyes to birds and mammals, but they have a more spherical lenses, which is a ball-shaped ball -shaped structure, just like the picture showing. So when they're living on the water, their eyes is constantly being washed, so they do not need tear ducts for that, which answer to the second question that they do not produce any tears. Although some species do have extensions of skin that cover part of the eye, and some sharks have nictating membrane to protect their eye during feeding. Okay, the next slide that we want to talk about is the eye of a fish, and fish actually have very similar eyes compared to humans. In comparison, fish and humans Whenever it comes down to their eyes, fish have some sort of type of protective film that goes over their eye. Um, the some reason, some of the reasons they have this extra coat is just so the coat is so they can see more clearly under the water. Um, more reasons is so they can see their surroundings and also making sure that there's no predators near them. Um, the fish have rod and cone cells on their retinas so so we know that they're able to see in color as well as in shades of gray gray light and dark this also helps with the extra coat it allows them to see colors and absorb light the next slide i'm going to be talking about is the molecular vision Um, so, what is molecular vision? This is a type of vision found mainly in animals with eyes that are placed on opposite sides of their face, such as fish, rabbits, and prey. Most prey have molecular vision. This helps them to respond more quickly upon visionary sensories, such as a threat um, from a predator. Molecular vision enables animals to see more than one plane of vision since their eyes are both working separately since they're on opposite sides of their face. A result is they can see different objects at the same time. However, the more further down you go into the water, the more the, the molecular vision is restricted. This means that some animals' uh, molecular vision are much less effective at the peripheral depths um, or relative distance between objects that are beyond their measures. The next type of vision that some fish have is called, besides monocular, is binocular vision. And binocular vision is when you can focus on an object with both eyes creating one image. We, as humans, have binocular vision. This type of vision helps with depth perception, and this means they're able to judge the distance of nearby objects. So some fish have very poor vision, and 
an example of that is the Mexican blind cavefish, which no longer has eyes. They live in caves, and this is this environment is hard to come across food, so the animals need to save their energy, and being sightless gives them a major boost. <clears throat> Since they live in darkness, they don't need their visions, such as the saying, move it or lose it, it's use it or lose it for them. Um, so the fish eat anything they can find, like dead animals or plants. Instead, this fish can view its surroundings by producing bursts of suctions with its mouth. By feeling the pressure waves as they bounce back to get them to them, they get a sense of distance. This lateral line enables the fish to sense changes in water, pressure, and turbulence adjacent to its body. Using from this information that they get off of the uh, pressure, schooling fish can adjust their distance from adjacent fish if they come too close or stray too far. There's a saying, an eye for an eye, but for some fish, it would make sense to say an eye for a lateral line. An example of this could be um, when you're at the pool and you push the water towards someone, and depending on how hard you push the water and how hard it hits them, you can tell how far or close someone is. Try this out if you haven't before. And another way to explain this could be the picture to the right. These are our resources. Thank you for listening.